This episode of Proper English is brought to you by Phrasal Verbs for Health, the difference between talking and speaking, and the idiom as fit as a fiddle. Hello, I'm Dave. And I'm Alison. And we'd like to welcome you to our podcast, which, as you know, is called Proper English. English. If you're learning English and you want to know what shake it off means. If you get stuck describing a minor illness. If you are puzzled by how to pronounce V-I-R-U-S. Then proper English is just the thing for you. I guess it's fair to say that today's episode is somewhat inspired by current world events. Yeah. COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus, has been announced by the World Health Organization as a pandemic. If proper English is still up and running years down the line, and we very much hope that it will be, oh, yeah. then this will be a distant memory. What it has highlighted for us is that the words virus, quarantine and isolation are difficult to pronounce for a lot of our students. Yeah, it's the, the long I mm. that in a lot of languages, just doesn't exist. Uh, so people are saying virus and isolation, whereas it's isolation and virus and quarantine, which doesn't have the long I. It has an E sound, quarantine. Anyway, we're not going to dwell on the virus, except to say that thanks to teaching on italki and this podcast, we now have friends all over the world and we wish the very best of health for you all. So let's get learning. Having a healthy lifestyle involves using several phrasal verbs. Hold on a minute, Ali. Are you saying that by using phrasal verbs in spoken English I can get fit? <laughs> if only it were that easy, Dave. We'd both be as fit as fiddles. Wow. And now you're chucking idioms around like it's the end of the episode. I know. Deal with it. And another. I can't give up idioms <laughs> any more than I can give up Kate. Boom. Phrasal verb number one. Give up. We can also cut out something or cut something out. For instance, doctors say that cutting out sugar is beneficial to health. Yep. And if you struggle to cut it out, you could at least cut down on it. All that cake means I've put on weight. Well, we could both do with starting to work out more often. Maybe we should take up a sport. Hmm. We're not really sporty types, though, are we? Not really. Maybe we'll get the 80s playlist on more often and dance like no one's watching. <laughs> <sighs> we could. Shall we have a what's the difference? What's the difference? Talking and speaking. The two verbs mean the same thing, in that they mean to use your voice to communicate. So... What's the difference? This is really nuanced stuff, isn't it? Mm. We can talk only in general terms because there aren't rules as such. A lot of the time, speak and talk can be used interchangeably. On the whole, speak is more formal than talk. Compare, Professor Fawcett will be speaking at the International Conference. Two, Maria is going to talk to us about working in marketing. Speak may also imply a level of importance or urgency. You'll ask to speak to the manager if you are making a complaint, for example. Oh, ah, you wouldn't say, oh, I need to have a talk with the manager. No. Nope. Yeah, it won't work. With speak, the emphasis is on the person, the speaker. Whereas with talk, it's more about the person doing the talking as well as the listener. Uh, so we might say we'll talk about something next time we see each other and it implies a conversation. If your boss says we'll speak about something later, mm. it may mean he or she intends to do most, if not all, the talking. Yeah, stuck on transmit. <laughs> we use speak when we're referring to languages. How many languages do you speak? Do you speak English? I hope so. And on the phone, when we get an unexpected call, we say, who's speaking? OK, back to phrasal verbs. If I feel as if I'm coming down with something, my mum always tells me to dose up on vitamin C. Coming down with something means you've got the first symptoms, or even before you get any symptoms, you just don't feel right. Yep, and a measure of medicine is a dose. So to dose up on something is to take it, and probably take it in its maximum quantity. 
we also might talk about having a bug. A bug is very much not a medical term, but we can use it to describe any self-diagnosed illness. Yes, she's had a nasty stomach bug. Ew. Or wrap up warm, you don't want to catch that bug that's going around. Now, if the illness is nothing too serious, maybe a cold, you'll probably fight it off without needing to see a doctor. We can also say that you'll get over it. Get over it. (laughs) Meaning you will get better. (laughs) You might even shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Thanks, Taylor. (laughs) If, If you shake off an illness, it means you get well again easily. Now, it might be that you're not sick with an illness, but you might be injured. If you damage a limb, it might swell up. That means that it's grown in size probably due to an accumulation of fluid. Ew. Ew. (laughs) You may be laid up as a result. Laid up, that is weird, isn't it? It is. I mean, we lie down when we go to bed, but if we're resting in bed due to an injury or an illness, then we would say we're laid up. Yeah, I think that's going back to Middle English. We'll have to find out. Yeah, we'll have to find out. Research is required. Uh, And the injury might require medical attention. And in that case, we'd have to go to hospital to get patched up. Patched up implies it's not too serious. Maybe a few stitches or a dressing. But we'd get sent home the same day. If an illness is serious but someone recovers, we would say that they pull through. Which is always positive. Yeah. Now, death is difficult to talk about. So when someone dies, we often find it hard to use the words dead or die. We use the expression passed away or passed Or we tell people that we've lost the person. As somehow, it feels easier to say it like that. To describe illness, we may say that we're ill, that we're unwell, we're sick or we're poorly. The last two, though, need a little more explanation. If a British person says that they've been sick, they might well mean that they have vomited. (laughs) Whereas North Americans use sick more commonly to describe any illness. Mm. And poorly... Is mainly used for children, or or perhaps older people. A child might tell you that they've been poorly. Adults can use it in a kind of cute way too, to describe a mild illness. Oh, and on the subject of vomit... Lovely. (laughs) One can describe the act of vomiting as throwing up. Or, if you feel the need to be specific, you could say, bring up, and then name whatever they brought up. Uh, Like, oh, she brought up a breakfast. (laughs) Oh, yes. Oh, he's bringing up bile. Oh. <laughs> you OK, Dave? You're not going to pass out, are you? Uh, I'm not going to lose consciousness. No, if I do, will you make me a nice cup of coffee when I come round? When you regain consciousness, we'll both have a nice cup of tea or I coffee. I want coffee. In fact, I'll get the kettle on now, just in case. And now it's time for Idiom of the Week. Idiom of the Week? I snuck as fit as a fiddle into the conversation earlier, but what does it mean? Well, the fit part seems straightforward, doesn't it? It means healthy, but comparing health to a fiddle... Yeah, because a fiddle is a violin. So it does seem strange to essentially say that one is as healthy as a violin. Well, it's one of those expressions that has evolved over time, like many of them. According to phrases.org.uk, our go-to site for anything idiomatic, Mm -hmm. the word fit was used in the 1600s to mean that something was suitable. These days, we still talk about something being fit for purpose. So, the comparison may be that something is as suitable for its purpose in the same way as a violin is suitable for playing music. According to the Free Dictionary, fiddle might have meant fiddler, the person playing the violin. And it was in the 19th century that the idiom was first used to describe physical health. Ah, well, there you go. And here we are at the end of another episode of Proper English. As always, we hope you've had fun listening in on our conversation. And whether you're a new listener or a regular subscriber, why not get in touch with us? You can email us at properenglish... All one word. ...at sapo.pt... Or you can ask us questions on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook if they're available in your country. And don't forget to tell everyone you know about us. Friends, family, anyone who's studying or learning English. And make sure you like this episode and leave us a nice review and subscribe to us on your favourite podcast app. So until next time, it's goodbye from me. 
and it's goodbye from me too. And thank you for listening to Proper English. And stay safe, everybody.